Vladimir Putin took office as president of the Russian Federation. Very sad and wet Putin, who does not remember the words of his own anthem. Patriarch Kirill, who forgot Putin's position. Your Excellency, dear Vladimir Vladimirovich, and which even the Kremlin cameras refuse to film. And, of course, Petrushev and Shoigu looked as if they had already been brought to be shot. This could briefly describe the so-called inauguration of Vladimir Putin. But this event, unfortunately, has not only a humorous entertaining character. Therefore, right now we will analyze it in detail and from different angles. I will show how this so-called inauguration differed from previous inaugurations of any kind of legitimacy, and I will demonstrate how the so-called Akila and his entire pack have degraded in 24 years. You can say at the end, come to me, Bundelogs. <laughs> Hi, I'm Arsen Sambalyuk, the host of Channel 24 and the author's blog called Razbor Pometer, Mess Analysis. Please support this video with a comment and like. Follow us if you haven't had time yet, and let's get started. Razbor Pometer, Mess Analysis. So, First, we need to understand the concepts. Why do I call this inauguration so called? Because it has nothing to do with the inauguration. Not a single civilized country or organization, not a single normal person in the world recognizes Russian pseudo-elections as real elections, and Putin as the president of Russia. At the same time, it is recognized as terrorists and criminals in most civilized states. So someone will say that it would probably be better to call it the coronation of a criminal authority or imponization. But this also has a problem. Anyone who has been following the news for the past two and a half years is well aware that under prison law, Vladimir Putin has been lowered at least twice. In 2022, this happened thanks to the Ukrainian Defense Forces. And last year, Putin was brought down by his own six, Prigozhin, who almost captured Putin's fortress Moscow in one day. The chief of the general staff fled from here as soon as he learned that we were approaching the building. And as we all know from the outstanding observer of Russian political realities, Andrei Andreevich Piontkovsky. A lowered boss is no longer a boss. And the twice lowered boss. And a boss who has been lowered twice is no longer a boss. My task is to call a spade a spade and not call it someone else's name. As a journalist, I refuse to call it an inauguration. And an international war criminal, who, according to independent estimates, did not receive even half of the votes, and this is even in a state like Russia, there is simply no reason to call such a creature president. This event is nothing more than a prison circus or a camp vaudeville. If you still have options on how to describe this event, share in the comments. But yes, once they had everything very legitimate with this case. Let's see how it all began. In 2000, the whole world watched the inauguration of Yeltsin's young and, as it seemed to some, charismatic successor. I swear by the exercise of the powers of the President of the Russian Federation to respect and protect the rights and freedoms of man and citizen.
By the time of his first inauguration, Putin and his subordinates were already in full swing blowing up residential buildings with residents of Moscow, Volgodonsk and Barnax, and unleashing a bloody war against the Chechen Republic of Ichikaria. Therefore, even according to the laws of the Russian Orthodox Church, Putin did not get to heaven after his first inauguration. I swear, Putin did not hesitate to lie about the Russian constitution then, and he still lies. I swear. But at this moment, he just reads the text that he sees on the cheat sheets. What has really changed in all these 24 years is the way Putin looks others in the eye. Look, in 2000, this creature looked quite confident and literally drilled with the eyes of those who were in its path. Vladimir Putin must rise to the sound of the Kremlin chimes. Now this creature cannot help but look away and drills with his eyes only at the shoelaces of his own subordinates. The order was given for personal courage on the battlefields, so the officers greeted the Knights of St. George standing. On the one hand, this is fully consistent with Putin's prison status. If he survives to the zone, then he will be forbidden to raise his eyes according to the concepts. On the other hand, there is a certain paradox in this. You've been at the trough for a quarter of a century. Over the years, you have carried out 37 million purges of the entire vertical of power. But every year you yourself look away from your own subordinates more and more. I don't know why this is so, but I guess it's the lie that affects the subconscious. The more you lie, the harder it is for you to look into the eyes of others. You see, in 2004 he was already interested in shoes much more than in people's faces. And his mood was not very good. Perhaps Putin then seriously thought that this was his last inauguration, and in a few years he would have to escape or go to prison. Although in words he was, of course, still Leo Tolstoy. From the rostrum, he pushed a speech about the alleged decentralization of power. It's strange that no one laughed. I want to emphasize that the success and prosperity of Russia cannot and should not depend on one person, or on one political party, one political force. We must have a broad base of support in order to continue the reforms in the country. Particular attention is paid to the expression of the facade part of Sergei Lavrov's head. Dear friends, we still have a lot to do. And a horse, such a young and young Medvedev is ahead. And, by the way, about Medvedev, this is what his inauguration looked like. Yes, yes, in case someone has forgotten, in Russia there was another president between Putin and Putin. Between 2004 and 2008, Kremlin maniacs began to invest crazy money in propaganda. By the way, television itself made a huge technological step forward around that time. So Medvedev's inauguration looked 10,000 times brighter and richer than the previous inaugurations of Vovka the Bald. But everyone still continued to be terribly afraid of Putin, so, of course, they did not deprive him of attention. Putin's part of the inauguration was filmed in the style of gangster St. Petersburg. But a coat with shoulder pads and two Gelenwagens with guards was not the only hint that Putin continued to be in charge, at least temporarily. He said this personally, almost in plain text.
For me, the obligation to protect Russia has been and remains the highest civic duty. I have followed it all these years and will continue to follow it all my life. After this first castling and four years of Medvedev's rule, something had to be changed urgently. On the one hand, Medvedev attacked Georgia and dispersed protests in Russia. That is, he irritated the then so-called Russian liberals. On the other hand, he annoyed Putin by constantly communicating with Obama and playing on the iPad. Despite the fact that Putin has not learned to play not only on an iPad, but even on a TV console. And in general, Putin is tired of being called some kind of prime minister. And at official events, especially international ones, he is paid no more attention than some Medvedev. Therefore, Putin went and announced that he did not care what the Russian people thought there. He takes and returns to the presidency. No matter how you act during the wedding night, the result should be the same, you know. And he returned. In 2012, there was another inauguration. I will tell you frankly, there was nothing particularly interesting at it, except for the fact that at that time the current president of Russia, Dmitry Medvedev, was forced to wait for his formerly still subordinate for 15 minutes. The directors of the broadcast even specifically focused on this so that everyone understood who was the Tsar and who was a serf. First, Medvedev, a serf, went into the Kremlin. And only then did the Tsar begin to move towards the Kremlin, and not even by car. Cameras accompanied Putin from the moment he first left his prime minister's office. And we see the president-elect walking down the corridor and starting to descend the marble staircase to the car that is waiting for him to take him to the Kremlin. And then for 15 minutes, commentators sucked on how beautifully Putin drives through the Russian capital in non-Russian cars. Vladimir Putin's motorcade passes by the restored church and approaches the Bolshoi Kamini Bridge. In the end, this experiment with Putin's public humiliation of other officials was considered a success. And they decided to repeat it in 2018 at Putin's next inauguration. Due to the fact that there was no other president for humiliation at that time, the role of scapegoats or omission was assigned by the formal leader of the other branches of power. The head of the constitutional court, as well as the heads of the two chambers of the so-called parliament, the Senate and the State Duma, lined up to wait for Putin even before he began to put on his jacket in his office at the other end of the Kremlin. This is the basis of how the modern Russian state is organized, the head of which is the president. He is already here in the Kremlin, but now he is still in his working residence. And now the president's office in the Senate building of the Kremlin is on the air, where he receives a signal that everything is ready in the Grand Kremlin Palace. Today the move will be inside the Kremlin. Here, Putin was visually significantly different from how he looked at previous inaugurations. Unfairness, bone, dense custody and bureaucratic deadness. Firstly, because the term he had just served did not last four years, as before, but six years. Secondly, because Putin began to age rapidly, and an extremely large dose of Botox appeared in the facade of his head. And thirdly, in my opinion, Putin, like any Voldemort, is also becoming more disgusting because of the crimes he commits. And between 2012 and 2018, Putin committed a lot of crimes. First of all, in relation to Ukraine, against which he unleashed a war two years after the start of his term. Well, the current circus in the Kremlin is just a continuous mix of absurdity and sadness. 
Firstly, on this day, for the first time in all these years, there was a specific downpour during the inauguration in the center of Moscow. And then everyone began to be covered with snow. Hello, Moscow speaks and shows. Usually, for Putin's inauguration and other important propaganda events, clouds were dispersed over Moscow. For this, aircraft with special equipment were traditionally involved. But this year, as we can see, there was a problem with the aircraft. Officially, of course, no one reported on this, but the fact remains. Moscow either did not have enough aircraft, well, the fact that they are either at the front or already in the ground, or the Kremlin considered that there is too much risk. The risk that someone will start shooting down planes over Moscow on this day. And, in the end, Putin, on the day of his alleged triumph, was forced to get wet under the cold mess falling from the sky on the Kremlin. A turning point in history, and not only in our own history, but also in all of humanity. A separate form of art is how propaganda showed the so-called guests, that is, extras from criminal officials mixed with criminal occupiers, of which there were many. In general, this is just 40 minutes of chaotic demonstration of the facades of the heads of various creatures, even without comment, but with a special emphasis on faces of foreign appearance to demonstrate Putin's alleged international recognition. However, a few shots attract special attention. First, attention to Shoigu. He feels very bad. Lavrov was also not over the moon at this event. But most of all, my attention was riveted by the appearance of this character. Kadyrov, who was recently buried again by the press, came here, apparently to prove to everyone that he is not dead, and not even terminally ill. It turned out so-so. He climbed the stairs much slower than the local pensioners, but I generally liked this moment the most. Someone may think that this footage shows Kadyrov's grey-haired bodyguard or his personal grey-haired assistant helping him with his coat and doing it with the speed of a professional lackey. But no, this is not a guard or assistant, this is a deputy of the State Duma of four convocations, including the current Major General and the second person in occupied Chechnya, Adam Delimkanov. If this is a general and a deputy, then one can only imagine how guards, assistants and really lackeys are crawling in front of Kadyrov. Although what are we talking about, if the whole so-called patriarch of all Russia Kirill clings to the war criminal Putin like real lackeys. He has almost completely moved to Tsarist Russia. Your Highness, dear Vladimir Vladimirovich. Your Highness, Vladimir Vasilyevich. That's what flattens grandfather. Dear Vladimir Vasilyevich, Vladimir Vladimirovich. Vova KGB Senior, aka Kirill of the Russian Orthodox Church, wished Vova KGB Junior to rule Russia until death. May the protection of the Queen of Heaven be with us in all your life until the end of time, as we say. And with anguish I will say, God grant that the end of the age does not herald the end of your stay in power. At the same time, Kirill added that if Putin only fights all the time, he himself will be 200 sooner rather than later. Along with this torment, today, I wish you especially peace of mind, this is not true. Because if there is only one struggle, as they say, 24 hours a day, then not only the human body cannot withstand it, then against the background of such a state of mind, fatal bumps can arise.
At some point, one of the cameras of the Kremlin pool refused to film a concert of an old KGB hypocrite. She simply turned away from this disgrace. In short, there were a lot of jokes. But, of course, there were also very sad things. For example, the pseudo-inaugural speech of this creature. In principle, it can be divided into three theses. First, the special military operation is not going according to plan, but very heroically. I want to bow to our heroes, participants in the special military operation, everyone who is fighting for the fatherland. Second, spiritual bonds will never break. And this is, first of all, the preservation of the people. I am sure that support for centuries-old family values and traditions will continue to unite public and religious associations, political parties, and all levels of government. And thirdly, Russians will live even better. We are confidently looking ahead. Well, okay, I agree with you, it was also quite funny. And we need to make a breakthrough, I said this for a reason. This is a breakthrough from the other side of the stadium, the water is gushing out. Well, he talked about the need for a breakthrough. A breakthrough into the future. Everything is falling out of there. If we don't make this breakthrough, and that's the whole point. In addition, as I said, the first faces of Russia after Putin at this event were very sad. And this surprised me. It would seem that you have a new enthronement of the fluid boss. You remain reproached for another six years. No one is really bombing your Moscow now. And due to the six-month delay in the American support package for Ukraine, your boys even have some temporary successes at the front. Usually, in the Kremlin, everyone is not just in a very good mood from such events, but simply in complete ecstasy. But not this time. Perhaps because they themselves already want to go to the grave or at least retire, because most of them have been running around the Kremlin for more than 20 years. Perhaps, on the contrary, something unusual is being prepared in the Kremlin, such as a coup or new purges. And therefore everyone is very anxiously waiting for this something. Honestly, I don't know why this is the case right now. But what I know for sure is that in any case, dear viewers of Rasbor Pomata, mess analysis, no matter how much you and I like the doomed expressions of the facade of the head of the Kremlin maniacs, this is not a reason for you and me to slow down or, God forbid, stop. On the contrary, it is only necessary to increase the pressure. Go to these demonstrations in Western countries. Let them transfer all their weapons to Ukraine, and produce even more new weapons for themselves and for Ukraine. Let them not send ambassadors to the Kremlin, but send their missiles to the Kremlin. Now is the perfect time to do so. And of course, right now I ask you to donate using this QR code, or by using the link to the fund 24tv.ua in the description of the video, so that it is much easier for our defenders at this really difficult moment, and in Russia, so that there are much more, Bavovna, in the most painful places for Putin. And of course, distribute this video, like and write comments so that the video is seen by as many people around the world as possible. Follow us if you still haven't had time to do so for some reason. See you in the next issues of Rasbor Pomata, The Mess Analysis. Take care of yourself, take care of Ukraine, take care of humanity, protecting Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine!